German politicians are now actively considering banning the AFD, the Alternative for Germany party, now that it's rising in the polls. Last week, the German president um, gave a very coded speech uh, suggesting that the enemies of democracy are on the march and we need to do something about it. He didn't name the AFD as such because he has to stay politically neutral, but everyone knew what he was getting at. I mean, Rakeep, this would be a pretty extraordinary step in a modern democracy to ban a party that has a lot of popular support. Well, well there, is, there is a history in Germany of, of banning um, political parties, but I think that the real issue here is that you have a German political establishment which which simply just what doesn't want to take the concerns and grievances of those who are flocking towards the Alternative for Deutschland uh, seriously. Uh I wrote about the 2015 migrant and refugee crisis and the impact that was having on German society. Uh, And many people, if they're familiar with German society, they'll know that Germany has even struggled to integrate third and fourth generation people of Turkish origin who were born and raised in Germany. So I made the point that if you put on top of that, the 2015 migrant refugee crisis, um, many uh, people coming from countries such as uh, Syria, Iraq and Afghanistan that's going to exacerbate the country's existing problems when it comes to integration. These recent polling figures are quite something, polling as high as 21%. I just find it absolutely remarkable, though, that the German political establishment's reaction is now nothing really to understand what is concerning these uh, voters, um, which, are, which are now entertaining the possibility of voting for the alternative for Deutschland, um, how, how we can play a part in actually reducing the AFD's vote share it seems like they're now entertaining the possibility of just banning the party completely, which, in a way, might backfire. It might even increase its popularity further. Yeah. And it seems like there's a lot of issues even beyond uh, migration that voters are, are angry about. You know, the energy crisis in particular mm-hmm. has hit Germany hard, and yet the German government is still very wedded to green politics in particular. Um, you know, there are lots of economic troubles. But, um, I mean, Andrew, what do you make of this sort of argument that is being made that actually, in order to defend democracy, in order to save democracy, we basically have to destroy it (laughs) by uh, silencing about a fifth of the population. Yeah, I mean, it reminds me of that common misinterpretation of Karl Popper's paradox, you know, the the paradox of tolerance, uh, Mm -hmm. that we need to sort of not uh, tolerate uh, the intolerant. Uh, But it it, it wasn't quite what he meant. I mean, he was very clear that we should tolerate uh, all ideas and individuals so long as they have the capacity for debate or rational debate. You know, he's not saying that we should just silence all views that we disagree with, even if they are malicious. Um, I think this is an example of people sort of addressing the symptom rather than the cause. The reason why lots of people are gravitating towards this party is, well, it's manifold. Uh, Sometimes it is a protest situation. It's a sense of broad dissatisfaction. What you need to do, therefore, is to present arguments as to why that party does not deserve your vote uh, why it would? Why this is not the kind of protest that you should pursue, and why there are better options. Ultimately, democracy it works. Uh, it's not perfect, uh, but it's better than authoritarianism. And I don't understand this idea. Uh, it, it's it's a broader problem in society at the moment. This notion of just just silencing opposition, things that we things that we fear, rather than uh, trusting the marketplace of ideas and trusting humanity and trusting individuals and citizens to engage with ideas and to be persuaded. Uh, so I, I, I just think this is completely the right and exactly what Rakib said. This stuff does backfire. Just yeah. historically, it always does because it enables these groups to position themselves as martyrs. The, yeah. You know, this is not the party, the kind of party that I would ever support or come close to supporting. But I do know uh, that banning them is, is possibly the worst thing you can do, particularly when it comes to these, these uh, right wing parties whose appeal is largely down to this, this notion that they are being victimized. They really do play, like the woke, they really play with the notion of victimhood and capitalize upon it. So I would say trust in democracy uh, is, a, is a much better a much better approach and you can't uphold democracy uh, through censorship. Yeah, that's right. I mean, we should we absolutely shouldn't ignore the sort of nastier elements of the, of the AFD. You know, there have been uh, ties to the sort of uh, far-right marches of Pegida. There have been... Uh, leading figures who've downplayed the Holocaust. There are, you know, undoubtedly some nasty elements, but is that really what voters are flocking towards? It seems unlikely. There have been many attempts at uh, kind of uh, neo-Nazi parties that haven't um, won over the public in in the same way um, in modern Germany. I mean, Rakib, um, this is, you could say this is actually part of a broader 
trend in sort of liberal democracies, especially from the sort of liberal establishment, where the idea is that, you know, we can solve our problem, we can get rid of the populists through sort of legal means. I mean, I'm thinking of, um, you know, Trump's legal troubles, but not just that. Think of the crusade against disinformation or the censorship that is rising up against uh, supposedly, you know, the things that are tricking people into voting the wrong way. I mean, do you see that broader pattern? Well, I mean, first, I made the point. I, I know that, that that there are clearly uh, highly unsavoury elements of the AFD, um, very much characterised by neo-Nazism and a particularly aggressive form of anti-Semitism. We also have to make the point within that twenty-one percent, there are people who are not ethnically German, who are, who are entertaining the possibility of um, voting for the alternative for Deutschland. So I think that we really need to engage with the concerns of those voters. And and, and Andrew is absolutely right that. It's a quite remarkable response that will entertain the possibility of banning a political party, which is primary appeal is anti-establishment victimhood. Yeah, I, I think I think it's it's quite quite shocking. I think what's really interesting is something that I, I thought about that I think actually one of the positives of Brexit was that the UK managed to distance themselves for a little bit. This is happening at the heart of Europe, where you have the AFD, which is now polling one in five voters and then the response of the political establishment there in Germany is that we should outlaw this party in, a, in our own country as opposed to having confidence in our own policies in the marketplace of ideas as Andrew said. So I, I think that for all its flaws Britain's multi-ethnic democracy is not looking in too bad shape especially when we're seeing what's going on in Germany at the moment and the more recent and the rights which recently took place in France. And, and Andrew what do you make of the fact that it does seem to be the sort of more self-described liberal side of politics that is reaching for authoritarian measures um, a lot of the time. Well, they're not liberal at all, though. That's the point. So mm. uh, the, those who are suggesting that this is the approach, that, that, is, a, that is an illiberal approach. But I, um, I, I think authoritarianism is something that has an appeal irrespective of political inclination. You know, I think uh, George Orwell couldn't get Animal Farm published for quite some time. Uh, because people were just shocked at the idea that uh, he had exposed the left as being as as having a propensity for authoritarianism in the way that the right do, and they never forgave him for that. You know, there's still some uh, Stalinists out there who still uh, d d demean him for this and say that it's completely unacceptable. So I'm not actually surprised, uh, but I do think that as soon as you start calling for censorship of your political opponents, you can't really call yourself a, a liberal anymore. Uh, and I think you have hit on it when you when you mention these sort of very nefarious, unpleasant aspects of the AFD. Well, emphasize those, you know, remind people of that and 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 explain why, you know, this 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 is not acceptable uh, in a liberal democracy to have to have people like that in charge. But ultimately, it has to be about the voters. It has to be about the power of the demos, uh, because if you're in power simply because you've obliterated your opponents and not given people the chance to vote for them, are you really in power at all? And you'll generate an awful lot of resentment from the voters. It's not good.